Alienware has recently released one of its most insane versions of its Area 51 desktops. Meet the all new Alienware Threadripper Edition. Don't let the looks fool you because this Alienware is still using the same chassis since 2014. This is not your average desktop. For this edition, Alienware chose to incorporate AMD's newest processor, the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. This is a 16 core, 40 megabytes of cache, 3.6 GHz overclocked on all cores with the monstrous 64 PCI Express lanes. Now for those who are not into specs and just want to know that you'll have the fastest, most reliable tech computer on the market, Alienware has you covered. This computer will handle anything that can be thrown at it and then ask for more. Let's take a look at Alienware's newest desktop, the Area 51 Threadripper Edition to find out if this machine can stand up to its name and exorbitant price tag. Looking at the chassis, it's noticeable that the Alienware has found a design that they enjoyed and stuck with that for the long haul. In terms of aesthetics, Alienware has taken a unique approach to their desktops with an angled triangular shape that in reality looks like it might have fallen out of a spaceship and landed at Dell's headquarters. The overall shape may be described by some as imposing. That's because the Alienware takes up a substantial amount of space compared to most desktops on the market now. The Area 51 chassis is 25 inches long, 11 inches wide, and weighs a massive 62 pounds. But this design choice may be what Alienware was going for. Showcasing the old adage, go big or go home. Aesthetics aside, the design choice of the chassis has some practicality. That's because a 45 degree angle of the Area 51 was built to increase the airflow by keeping the fans and power supplies away from the bottom of the unit. Looking at Alienware's signature offering of RGB lighting, some would argue that it was quite minimal, but I find myself enjoying the look. Personally, I think some RGB lighting can be overkill, but this was just the right amount for me. Both sides of the Area 51 light up with fully customizable lighting, which is controlled through Alienware's Alien Command Center. This is where you could go and change the effects and colors of the lighting with some of Alienware's presets, or you could go make your own. You could even upload game profiles so it reacts to a specific game with custom lighting effects. Examining the functionality of the chassis, we can find that Alienware has given us an absurd amount of ports in the Area 51. This means that finding a spot to plug in your VR, external hard drives, controllers, or any other device you could think of shouldn't be an issue. Looking at the front of the unit, one must say why many things come and go, it looks like the Blu-ray DVD writer is here to stay. Underneath that, there are two conveniently placed headphone jacks, a pair of USB 3.1 ports, and a media card reader. Located on the upper front part of the unit is the fan air intake unit, which blows cold air onto the, both the CPU and GPU while hot air escapes out the back of the Area 51. Like most desktops, the ports that you really care about are in the back, and when we look we find that Alienware has you covered. The Area 51 has seven more USB 3.1 ports located on the back panel, along with a button that activates a light that can help you when you're trying to figure out where to correctly plug in your cables. There among the USB 3.1 ports, you'll find one lonely USB Type-C port, along with a couple of USB 2.0 ports. The caveat is that the USB Type-C port does not support Thunderbolt 3, which would have been nice on such an expensive unit. Alienware has also added five sound inputs for front and center sound channels, rear and side surround sound, and an S slash PDIF input. There are also two ethernet jacks and a pair of HDMI and display ports as well. We can't forget the most important part of this build, the CPU. This computer is called a Threadripper for a reason. That's because it's the only pre-built computer on the market allowed to be built with AMD Ryzen's Threadripper 1950X. Alienware has signed an exclusive deal with AMD, allowing Alienware to be the only company allowed to use these processors in pre-built systems. Now you can always buy a Ryzen and build your own which would end up being significantly cheaper but you would also lose out on any system warranty or tech support. When you think about it, 16 cores can sound like overkill, but the real question is, is it practical? Well for starters, given the sheer number of cores that Ryzen has, it's the most powerful computer on the market. But does power equal performance? With 16 cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM, how well did the Area 51 Threadripper do in my benchmark test? 
when I ran my Cinebench 15 benchmark test, my Threadripper clocked a CPU score of 2102, which was surprisingly 11% lower than Intel's i9-7900X. But it was still in second place with a 15% difference between Intel's i7-6950X. My rig only has 16GB of RAM, but you could always add more RAM and hard drives to optimize your computer for speed. Considering that the Threadripper still blows most processors out the water, the Area 51 is an excellent choice for those looking to utilize its multi-threads for workloads and even for gaming. It's a top of the line processor and those looking to upgrade will appreciate what the 16 cores have to offer and will definitely find worth in this chip. With an AMD chip, you're able to download AMD Ryzen Master app that lets you see the intricate details concerning your Threadripper chip. This is where you control the number of cores you could have active at a time. There are two quick options to choose from, one called creator mode, which is what your computer will ship on by default. This allows for all cores to be active, great for multitasking, not so great for gaming. There is also an option to put the computer into gaming mode, which shuts down 8 cores, which allows your computer to be optimized for gameplay. To see if gameplay was affected by the number of cores, I tested a few games in both creator and game mode. The first game I tested was Forza Motorsport 7. The Nvidia GTX 1070 Ti that was shipped with the computer was able to handle the video settings on ultra mode, which was expected. When I fired up the game in gamer mode, I noticed that the FPS were mostly stable, staying around 38 frames per second. Pulling up a side by side comparison. I played the same game in creator mode and noticed right away that the frames per second were more erratic while in creator mode. The FPS counter stayed in between 23 to 52 FPS, with the average staying in the high 30s. CSGO was a different story in my test. I noticed that in both creator and gamer mode, the FPS counter would stay in the high 90s. This game ran buttery smooth on both settings which paired with my Predator monitor was an exhilarating gameplay experience. With the Evil Within 2, I had maxed out the settings on both Creator and Gamer mode again. Both times I played, the FPS counter stayed in between 25 to 30 frames per second. My final test was the most telling. When I launched Rainbow Six Siege in Gamer mode, everything was great. I had the game playing in max settings, I was getting a stable 47 frames per second, but switching over creator mode is where I noticed the most drastic change in FPS. This game stayed in between 25 to 30 frames per second my whole playthrough. For what it's worth, I got the best frames per second when I was using gamer mode, and if you're not trying to multitask, I would recommend putting your Area 51 in this mode to get the smoothest and most enjoyable gameplay. Given everything the Alienware Area 51 Threadripper Edition has to offer, it's an impressive machine to say the least and stands up to its imposing staff and gruff name. But that sweet multi-core CPU does come at a premium price, making this desktop unattainable for a majority of consumers and to the dismay of computer enthusiasts who will undeniably boast of their ability to build a custom PC with the same specs for cheaper. For those who may not have the skills, time or knowledge to build their own PCs and have some extra cash lying around, this is a great high-end pre-built desktop. With an average price tag of over $3,000, this impressive piece of hardware is built to stay around for the long haul. Coupled with Alienware's easy upgradable chassis, this computer should be on your short list. There are not many PCs out there that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with this. The Alienware Area 51 Threadripper Edition can be expensive, but those who are looking to get the best on the market look no further than what Alienware has to offer. This brings my final orange score for the Alienware Area 51 Threadripper Edition 4 out of 5.